Hi there. Well, it's a, a nice spring morning in the garden. It's the beginning of March and we are still sort of with COVID restrictions. So any camping is going to be restricted to the garden. And that is my, my plan for today. Another garden camp. It's difficult to find things to film really, videos to create. I can't spend every day in the, in the pub shed. So I thought it was time we did another garden camp. It's uh, the next best, best thing to being out. I've sort of been pretty well occupied these last few months. I've had a couple of sort of furniture building projects to do in the house and I've done quite a few alterations to the pub shed that will be in a later video that uh, there's, there's, I must have spent a month in there so I've done quite a lot uh, but I'll, I'll do another video probably around beginning of April but just before we're allowed back out But camping in the garden, it's not bad, at least I, I am lucky. I have got a garden to camp in. You can, once you're in the tent, you could sort of be anywhere. All right, you haven't got the views. A lot of my videos is probably the first five minutes is climbing up a hill, photographing and filming the views, a bit of drone photography. So obviously I can't do that. We are a little bit restricted. A lot of people I've noticed have been walking around the local areas. Uh, quite a few have been reviewing bits of kit. Well, I've no new kit. Uh, all my kit is old. Um, what I thought I would do to vary it a bit today, I'm using a different tent. It's a, a Crooks X2 Storm tent. It's built for the worst weather conditions you could ever experience and it's as strong as anything. I've only used it once. It's a little bit heavy. I think it's about 2.9 kilograms, which doesn't mean an awful lot to me. But if we say it's about six and a half, seven pound, something like that. But it's, uh, I haven't used it for three years. Um, and I did buy it about five years ago second hand I don't think they produce them now I was looking on the Crooks website and they haven't been produced for a few years so second hand might be the only way you would get hold of one but I'm sure we'll have a great camp uh, we've got some nice food and we might have got a little drop of whiskey as well. So what I'll do, I'll get this uh, Crooks tent uh, set up. Show you how it's set up. It's an uh, it's, uh, inner first tent, so it's not the easiest to set up. And I haven't set it up for three years, so hopefully uh, I'll remember how to, to set it up. So we'll go ahead and get, get the tent erected. Then we can get all the gear moved in uh, before it goes dark. Uh, the forecast today is lovely. The forecast for tomorrow, which is Wednesday and Thursday, is torrential rain with a bit of a storm coming over. But it don't matter. We'll either be in the tent when it's raining, or, well, it'll be tomorrow. I'll have packed up and all my gear will be drying then. Now the tent is basically a four pole geo, oh, I don't know, I can't pronounce it, geo attic uh, tent. So that gives it its strength and that extra pole probably gives it its extra weight as well. If you think the Sulu's only got three, this has got four, four poles. All colour coded, I'm pleased to say. Okay. 
So that is the four poles in now. It's just a matter now of clipping these into the uh, little uh, holes on the on the straps. So that is basically the inner set up and you can move that wherever you want to go. So the next stage is to get the outer on. It's very easy in the garden, calm weather, totally different on a hillside. I'd probably have this secured to my rucksack and pegged down and then I would secure the outer to my rucksack before I even attempted to put it across. So that's basically the tent set up. I dare say I'd have set my Sulu up in half the time and a lot easier. But it's nice to use something different. There's just these guys either side, uh, but it is, look at that, it's solid as anything. I dare say I can go around and tweak it a bit um, running the garden. But you can get this really tight and it doesn't matter what it blows at you, this will not move. My Sulu does flap a bit. This, you don't hear a sound. It's as solid as anything. So, before it gets dark, I'm gonna get all my gear in now. And uh, we'll get every, get the kitchen area set up and see what room we've got in to, to put all my, my gear. That's looking down to the far end. You can see there's like a, a small porch. I've got my boots in there. And you see there's plenty of room. That's me sleeping bag and mattress. My rucksack on that side. Just make out left, sorry, right and left. Got a couple of big pockets. And there's some pockets in the roof space as well. So there's plenty of room plenty of storage just going to swing the camera around so that's looking towards the porch now it's not a massive porch for cooking in but but it's okay i have cooked in it before as you can see down here we've got the bar area set up pleased to say we've got a uh, Glenfiddich 12 year old Glenfiddich 15 year old that's a new one to try and Balveni double wood all very nice whiskies that'll be later on so a quick look at what we're having for tea now this it's very basic food but it is one of my favorites and it's ideal for a cold winter's night Sausage and mash and peas and gravy. That's gonna go down beautiful. Before that, what we got there, a nice thick vegetable soup. And over here, I think that's a, like a coffee tiramisu type of uh, cheesecake. So that should be very nice. So it's looking like it's gonna be a good night in the tent. I'll come back to you in a bit. I'm just going to get these potatoes peeled. 
and get a bit of, bit of prep work done ready for tea. Well, made a start getting the tea ready. That's uh, the potato, that's all cut up, ready to, to boil and mash. Sausages, gonna have to fry them. Uh, my soup is in this titanium pot. Um, I'm just, I've got it, I'm gonna put it on a very low simmer. I don't want to burn it on, but that, that's ready. Uh, that's for the gravy, and we'll probably use the soup, uh, the, the titanium pot there, to do the peas in, and then use the pea water to make the gravy. So, it's all set up. Now, before we start cooking, I thought we'd have an aperitif. So, why not try this Glenfiddich 12 year old? I did actually have this on a previous camp and it was very nice. But if you, we'll have a look at it again because we've, we've got the 15 year old to do a comparison with. Totally different drinks. But if you think Glenfiddich is owned by William Grant, and they are a family firm and they've had the distillery since the 18, late 1800s uh, and it's still family owned. Massive um, distillery turning out billions, thousands of bottles, thousands of bottles. They, you could say they do supply what the consumer wants. So they are a bit mass produced and that. But a uh, bit of information, Glenfiddich, uh, that is Gaelic for Valley of the Deer. And it's a beautiful bottle, triangular shaped bottle. And if you have a look, there is a big V cut into the glass there. Whether that is to um, signify the valley. But uh, yeah, it's very nice. And another bit of useless information. William Grant and the Clenfiddich Brewery were the first um, distillery, distillery, sorry, I'm thinking of beer. The Glenfiddich uh, was the first uh, distillery to put their whiskey in cartons like that and present it in a lot, uh, lot better way. So I think we'll just uh, have a wee dram. I think whiskey and camping go together so well. Apart from the fact it's lightweight. I don't like drinking beer when it's cold. I like cascales and I like it I like to be warm when I'm drinking beer. It's quite cool out here and I wouldn't want to drink um, beer on a night like tonight. But as you can see, it's nice amber colour and it's, it's very light and fruity nose to it a nice sweet slight oaky taste to it as it, it it is matured in oak casks and um, ex sherry casks and then put in an oak vat to sort of marry all the flavors together but it is a sort of whiskey that uh, I think everybody would like it's quite a mild if you could say a mild very light whiskey but it is a uh, I can't, I can't think of any whiskey drinker not liking Glenfiddich. And it was once the most popular whiskey on sale in uh, probably the UK. Ah, 
perfect introduction to this meal. I'm just going to put this stove on, on a very low simmer. At least with the gas you can simmer. So I'm just going to keep moving that soup about so it doesn't burn on. Now I never mentioned but as you can see I've got my favourite roofing tile with me. I don't think I'm going wild camping without a roofing tile again. It's perfect. It, it's a nice, stable, fireproof platform. I reckon every wild camper will be carrying one of these soon. No, nobody will go wild camping without a roofing tile soon. Just wait, you wait, it'll catch on. I think we can say the, the sausages are done, so I'm just going to put them out the way and we'll get the peas warmed up. Just going to drain my potatoes. Now I've got some some butter here wasn't easy to pack can't have mashed potatoes without butter you should have milk in them as well but I haven't got any so this is my cut off potato masher Oops. Ah, uh, looking better. So I uh, I'll do all the washing up. So this meal should come together soon. That's nice buttery mash. Sausages. Get rid of that. There's a peas and that's the gravy. So the oh, a little bit of salt. That tastes wonderful. One of my favourite meals. So, I'm going to demolish this. I'm going to eat all this lot. I'll come back to you in a little bit when hopefully I can eat my sweet. Pleased to say, 
I got rid of all them pots. It's not a bad campsite, this. Luckily, the owners, they've got lots of water taps scattered about, so I managed to, to wash my pots there. Hopefully, they won't spot all the peas in the, the flower beds. Anyway, this is to finish. Uh, cappuccino cheesecake. Mmm. Oh, you can taste the coffee in that. It's very nice. Mmm. I'm actually quite full. The sausage and mash, uh, it went down very well. Very filling meal. But it's what you want on a, a night's camping. That food will keep me warm through the night. My eldest son has just left home, 24. He's... He's been gone before at university, come back. He's gone again now. He's gone to Manchester. I'm sorry, I've just got to keep eating this. Mm. Mm. I love coffee. I've eaten it soon. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. With him going to Manchester, it meant I got, I did four journeys to take him and all his stuff over to Manchester near the airport. But I then got moving house, you're allowed to do that. I got four journeys through the Peak District. I could not believe the amount of people there. First time on about a week ago, went over to Snake. There must have been 50 cars parked. More, more. All both sides of the A57 Snake Pass, both sides of the road. I have never seen so many cars. Another day we went... Fox House, then headed down to Carver, A6, that way, and again, Fox House, ev every, everybody was out there, I have never, in all my life, I have never seen so many people in the Peak District, um, I know it's Covid and everybody's out for their daily exercise, but I've never seen so many, so I reckon... When they allow us to go camping on, is it April the 13th, 15th, I ain't going out. I'm not going out. I'll give it a week, I might give it longer. I reckon everybody's going to be out. They've all got a taste for the Peak District and everybody's going to be out there. So it might be a, a couple of weeks before I venture out. And I work on the fact I'm, I'm going up northern edge of Kinder or... Bleaklow, like Grinner, Barrowstone, something like that. The really remote, hard to get to places. And I, I reckon it'll be quiet. But I, I could not believe the amount of people out there. But yeah, so I got four journeys uh, through the Peak District, moving all this stuff over to Manchester. Luckily, I have now got my garage back because he was using that as an office come workshop. So it, for two years I've had no garage. I've now got a garage back and it is crying out for an old car or a motorbike. Who knows? Who knows? I would think once we get out uh, while camping, I will forget about all that sort of stuff and get on with while camping. But I'd love to have a, another car in there at the moment. I've never seen such a big empty garage. But I think, yeah, once we get wild camping, I'll be back out wild camping. Anyway, I'm feeling rather full now. Um, I think I'm going to have a, a little rest.
That's what I need. I've got a long night. If you think, you're in the tent for 12 hours. At least. Probably longer. I was in here about 4 o'clock. I ain't going to be out till 8, 9 in the morning. So, yeah. Probably 15 hours. So, I'll have a little bit of a lay down. Catch up with the news. And then I'll come back to you in a, a bit. A little chat. And we have got... Two more whiskies to try. Very nice they are. I've already tried them, but they are very nice. I'll see you in a little bit. Well, that was a really nice meal. I've actually nodded off for a few hours. Um, quite tiring, get everything, everything set up and doing the filming and that. But time to try the other... Glenfiddich whiskey. So this is the Glenfiddich 15 year, also known as the Solero. Our Solero 15. Again, from the same uh, distillery in Dufftown. And again, that striking triangular bottle with the V, Valley of the Deer, cut in the glass. So, I think we'll try a little shot of this. I'll just put the top on, in case I knock it over. Whether you can see that, it's, it's more of a, a darker colour this time. And the nose is very sweet, very pleasant again. And that is totally different. A very sweet, clean taste, very mellow, and faint vanilla coming through. So again, a very nice whiskey. And again, this is so well priced, if you think... 15 years that's been maturing, made by craftsmen, in the supermarket, and you'll find it in most supermarkets, it's around £40. I think I, I got it uh, on Amazon, it was on Amazon Prime, and I thought I was going to have to wait a few weeks for it. But it came in a couple of weeks, and it was £35. So £35 for a 15-year-old a whiskey is, is such a good price, such a good price. Oh, that is... The finish is, is very warming, very warming, very satisfying. The way this is made, they mature it in new oak, uh, ex bourbon, and ex sherry casks. So it, it's actually matured in three different casks, and then that's brought together in what they call the the wooden solero um, marrying vat. So it's all put together in there to to sort of marry it all together but it certainly gives very nice whiskey yes a very nice whiskey well i'm just going to get a drink of water to uh sort of cleanse my palate take away that beautiful taste that warming afterglow 
of the Glenfiddich 15 year and then we'll we'll have a look at the last whiskey then good to have a, a drink of water when you're drinking whiskey it it clears your palate but it also rehydrates you uh, you're drinking a spirit so you do need rehydrating with with water to get some liquid in you so our final whiskey to look at this evening is Balveni Doublewood I saw this in Tesco I'd read about it a couple of people had recommend it and it was in Tesco I think it's 41 pound I've seen it for months and the price never altered and I had to bite the bullet and pay the full price. I wouldn't have normally paid that. I'd have waited for it to come on offer. But I paid £41 for it because it was one I wanted to try. Believe it or not, Glenfiddich, old, owned by William Grant, he owns this. Or the family firm owns this as well. This is in Dufftown, next, next door to the Glenfiddich uh, distillery. But this is Balveni. So it's 12 year old double wood. Pretty standard bottle, not as striking as the Glenfiddich bottle. Difficult to pour a single measure. I've probably poured a, oops, a double there. Very fruity nose. So, the Balvini Double Wood. It's actually putting X whiskey oak casks for majority of its life. That's where it's matured. And then for nine months, it's put into X sherry casks. And that's, that's giving it the extra sweetness and the hint of sherry. And the fruity, fruity uh, nose. And then probably for the last, I think it's about four months, it's brought together in a, an oak ton and sort of married together for three or four months just to, to complete the maturation. But it's got a nice sweet nose to it. Very fruity, sort of orangey, with a hint of vanilla and a hint of uh, sherry coming through. It's not in the sherry cask for a long time. I do like the sherry cask whiskies like uh, Abelour, one of my favourites. But this is very nice. Now, it might seem a lot to pay for a whisky. It might have been £41. But if you think, there's 28 measures, probably around that. Probably 28 measures. Now, I know in the tent, I'm trying to go through it a little bit quicker than I should. But I can't sit here for an hour on end talking about a glass of whiskey. Some people can, but if I sit on the computer at night to answer your comments, I might pour myself a small, all right, a large glass of whiskey. But that will last me an hour and a half, because all you need to do is
basically touch your lips with, with such a small amount. The flavours, they hit your tongue and your palate. And your senses are alert to it. And then for 10 minutes, and a few quick, and then another little sip. And in no time, an hour and a half has passed, and you still haven't drunk at all. So you might, that evening, you might only have a large whiskey. But it lasts you the best part of the evening. And you get him. All, all the sort of the benefits of a craftsman distilling this whiskey, maturing it for 12 years, and your one large whiskey, that's going to be what? Uh, 14, three pound. That's all it costs you, three pound. So I know 41 pound seems a lot, but when you break it down, it's just three pound for that simple enjoyment just having a and having the glass of whiskey there looking at it smelling it tasting it and that nice afterglow when you've had the glass of whiskey it's worth it well this year hopefully is looking better I've had my vaccination now. I had it probably two weeks ago. So hopefully I'm building up a few antibodies now. And my second injection is around May time. And I know people have got different thoughts on it. To me, I feel a bit more confident now. The future is looking a bit brighter. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It might be something we've got to live with. I don't want to go on about it. Yeah, I dare say we live with it. But I feel happy if I've vaccin been vaccinated. feel a lot more confident in that. And I'll be happy to go out. Me and my wife were talking about holidays. I want to go to France. My wife doesn't. So, there might be the odd rail trip. Solo rail trip. We'll have to see. Or we might... I think me and my wife might be going in this country. That's what she's happy with. I must admit, once I have a few whiskies, my thoughts turn to Scotland. I've done a few trips to Scotland. Um, been to a lot of it. I say a lot of it. It's been on the train a lot of the time, so you don't see every part of it. But I like it for the, the lack of people. A couple of years ago we did the Western Isles, Uist, Harris, Sky. Fantastic. At the time, I wasn't really drinking much whiskey. I drank the real ales. And I've got to admit they were rubbish. Um, two, I had to give back and say, I'm sorry, I cannot drink that. And I reckon it was because they don't sell it. So a real ale, a, um, a firkin, 72 pints of real ale in a cask wants to be sold in probably five days. That would be well, longer than five days. And they didn't sell it, so it tasted rubbish. So I looked at all, if I could say, the locals were drinking pint of tenants and a wee dram. So I did change my drinking habits towards the end. Uh, I only tried the the whiskies I knew. I'd like to try some of the more different, the Macallans. Uh, there's so many out there. The say the Glenfiddich, 18 years. But anybody from Scotland, how do you price it? Um, I looked at a bottle of Glenfiddich, 18 years, and it was uh, about 80 quid. I ain't going to pay anything like that for a bottle. It would be nice to have a wee dram and just think, mmm, that tastes nice, or it doesn't. So I just wondered how do they price it. Is every whiskey individually priced as you get to the uh, 
sort of a age statement where they're about 15, 20 years or something like that. Be interesting. It would make an interesting holiday and probably visit. I'd like to visit Glen Glenfiddich uh, Distillery uh, around that area. And uh, the space side area would be nice. My mother's family came from Elgin. So I feel I do have connections. Uh, the surname was Shanks and... Uh, they they came they came from Elgin and I have visited it uh, a few times. We've got a very nice breakfast. I'll show you in the morning. It's very simple, but I'm really looking forward to it. So I can assure you, nothing interesting is going to happen in the night. So I will see you in the morning. Good night, then. Good morning there. Well, I slept well. Never woke up at all. I must have slept from 12 o'clock till 8 o'clock. I don't normally sleep that that long. Must have been very tired. Or, or it could have been a little drop of whiskey. Cup of coffee to try and bring me round. And then we'll we'll have a look at breakfast. As you can probably hear, it's not so good out there. Not that we're going anywhere, but it is raining. So it will make filming a little awkward. I tend to put the camera outside, but I've no chance this morning. But we'll get on with breakfast soon. Treating myself this morning. I was going to have bacon and egg, decided to have ribeye steak, that way isn't it, ribeye steak and eggs for breakfast, that should go uh, down very well, nice bit of protein, a couple of cups of coffee. So I'm just going to finish this drink and then we'll get on with breakfast. He doesn't sound nice out there at all. That's my ribeye steak. As you can see, got quite a bit of marbled fat in. Oh, that gives it a beautiful, beautiful uh, taste. Let's put a bit of salt on. A little bit of pepper, all adds to the flavour. does look nice give it a, a little bit longer to cook it through so I think we'll take this steak out I reckon that's done that plate's warm Ooh. just get the eggs in Alright, it's probably not the healthiest of breakfast, but every so often. I'll move this 
the stove up there. Let's have a look at this. Mmm. Pure luxury. Steak and eggs for breakfast. That is as tender as anything. Mmm. Very nice breakfast. Um, a little bit filling. I think that will keep me going for most of the day. Well, it is a little bit damp in here. You can't open this up or the rain comes straight through onto the ground sheet. And it has blown in in places, so I think I've got quite a bit of drying to do. But luckily, I've not got far to go home. I'd like to think this is the last garden camp for a while. I've done a couple. It's all you can do with the, the present situation. But... I think next video, well definitely next video will be in the pub shed in early April and I'll show you the improvements that I've done. And then I will be out while camping later on in April when the mad rush in the middle of April has gone. I'll be out somewhere remote or somewhere where there isn't anybody. That's where I like to camp. I'm not looking forward to tidying this lot up, um, it's pouring down out there, but once it's in the garage, it's all drying off, and I have got a whole garage, I've got all my garage back, so I can hang all my gear up in there. So if I can thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll, I'll see you soon in the pub shed. Bye then.